all the way back on August the 28th, I pre-ordered something that I've been really, really excited to get to try out. This is not necessarily a new idea for a product, but it is a new version of a particular product. This is called the U-Perfect X Mini. And what this is, is something called a lap dock. This looks like a laptop, but inside is basically just a giant battery, right? It's a touchscreen, it's a keyboard, it's got some I.O. there, it's got some ports but you're meant to plug something else into it to drive it. Now, this could be a Samsung phone to then run Dex. This could be a Nintendo Switch, should you want to do that. This could, heck, this could be a Steam Deck, which is off screen to my right. Uh, this one in particular is $299, has an 11.6 inch screen, 1080p. You can see some of the specs there. And like I said, I ordered it back on August the 28th. And just uh, this morning, I got this thing delivered. So in this video, we are going to very quickly unbox this bad boy and give some first impressions. Okay, so first up in the box here is a power supply. Now this is one thing that is a bit disappointing to me and I'm actually confused here because it looks like there's an adapter on the barrel plug. That's a little bit odd, but it is a barrel plug, right? I wish this thing charged over USB-C. That is uh, probably the most disappointing thing about it. Definitely wish that was different, but it is what it is. Pulling this stuff out of the box. Well, that box is really big for something that's, at the end of the day, only that large. And then we've got some other stuff in here, too, that we will have to kind of dig through. And that's pretty much it for the box. Really big box, not a lot of stuff in there. So it looks like we have a little user guide, which shows you some adjustments for the screen. We have a USB A to C cable. A looks like this is... HDMI of some sort, and then this is a C to C cable. So you're pretty well set in terms of your uh, your cables for how you're going to actually plug this thing into uh, another device to drive it. Let's tear this plastic off here. And this is the device itself. I like this very kind of understated logo. It's got a glossy look, but it's not going to pick up fingerprints. It's not a material that's going to pick up fingerprints at all. Some rubberized feet on the bottom. That's pretty much it as far as that goes on. This side looks like we have our DC in for power, which again, wish that was USB charging, is what it is. USB-A to C ports there on the side. And then over here, looks like we have, uh, that, I don't know what that is, a little recessed area, but I don't think that does anything. Power, a micro SD card, another USB, and then a headphone jack. So quite a lot in terms of I.O. Opening it up, that hinge is pretty stiff, not too bad, and of course, it does, I believe, yep, folds all the way around so it can operate as a tablet. Let's bring that back around. We have a pretty okay feeling keyboard, rather rather large trackpad, pretty good size screen, uh, microphone there, and then some indicators there for uh, what is, what is uh, going on with the device. So all in all, this is a pretty solid piece of hardware. What does this thing weigh? Let's find out real quick. So in terms of grams, we're looking at about 1058 as far as grams. So not super light, honestly. It's kind of it's kind of on the heavier side, if I'm being honest with you. And that's partially because it has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. So let's keep this kind of in perspective. Something like my Z Fold 4 is a 4,400 milliamp hour battery. So theoretically, this thing should, I believe, it charges your device while it's plugged in. So you should be able to have this thing plugged in, running and charging your device for a really, really long time. So let's open this thing back up, let's find the power button, and let's press and hold this and see what happens. Since there's nothing like, there's no operating system here, I guess there's just like a basic firmware, but no actual operating system. You see they're waiting for connection. So we have a USB-C cable here, a C to C cable. I've not actually ran DEX on my Z Fold 4 yet at all, and I, I probably should have done that by now, but I just haven't uh, haven't done it. So let's plug this in there, and let's plug this in to, there's no C ports on the right side, so you're going to have to come around to the left side, and let's plug this in there. My Fold is now charging. It says connected to external display. I'm starting DEX there. You actually saw the screen there, just uh, on an external display there for a second. And there we go. We are now running DEX. I hope you can see that my fold is still operatable over here, but this is uh, there. There, this is this is DEX running. If you don't know what DEX is, basically it is a desktop environment that runs 
from your Samsung phone on a potentially a device like this and you can um, yeah use it exactly like you would be like a normal laptop from here of course you can launch applications which should maybe a double click yeah it should launch in a window this trackpad is very very sensitive is there a way to actually adjust this okay that's a lot better it does have multi-touch scrolling so that is pretty good what about the experience of using it with touch looks like everything is working just fine there natively out of the box i will say that the screen itself i wish i could really illustrate this a bit better maybe in tablet mode i can hold it up to the camera maybe you can kind of see this a little bit the screen itself does look a little bit washed out right now it's a little bit washed out and a little bit on the grainy side like it doesn't look like the greatest screen that i have ever seen however i believe there may be adjustments to this let's see what we have here okay so i can actually pump up the saturation just a little bit and that may that may have helped so basically you've got your controls here using function print screen opens up this menu these two move around the options this selects once you're in it, and then this will this f11 will go back so a little bit strange but not too bad i managed to pump up the colors just a little bit so there's a lot of cool stuff about decks i mean you get a, a notification on your phone you're of course going to see it on this screen down here uh, all of your applications are going to launch exactly the same. So I can see a lot of potential uses for something like this. I mean, if you were, let's say you were going to play some games or something like that, PUBG Mobile would work fine. And all of this stuff, like I said, is, is fully resizable. I mean, DeX is really the perfect use case for this. I know Motorola has something as well. I don't remember what it's called, Re Ready something, something like that. But you know what I'm talking about. And this is, yeah, like I said, this is kind of like the prime use case for it. Well, here's a question. Does this thing actually have its own speakers? Let's launch YouTube. Let's go full screen here. Go to my subscriptions and find one of my own videos. Let's... Okay, so the sound right now is coming out of my phone. There, maybe, is there a way to, under the deck setting, set default audio output? Play sounds through the TV or monitor when deck starts. Okay, so I've got that working. I'll see how loud these speakers are. And at least from this, the answer is incredibly quiet. Surely to goodness. You, you probably can't even hear that. Is Wow, it, there's no way that they're that quiet. What is going on here? Okay, that's more like it. Okay, so a little bit of weirdness there. There is a volume, uh, some volume keys here, but you can turn that up and down, but then there's also the volume actually on the device. So let's try the YouTube video again. Which is going on. That problem, like I said, has been solved. They covered this in a prior video. Not the best speakers I've ever heard. They're definitely a little bit on the on the the weak sounding uh, side. But you know, if you don't want to use the speakers of your phone, that is a setting you can change and you can get that done. So you know, that's kind of the general idea for a device like this. Is this ultimate sort of one technically now two device sort of productivity, but also kind of that continuation of your workflow, right? So let's say you've got a Z Fold 4, a Motorola device. I think there's some other brands that do have a desktop mode now as well. I think Xiaomi maybe does as well. And you're using your phone when you're out and you're getting work done on this big screen, but then you get home and you think to yourself, I want to use an even bigger screen and have a really big keyboard that's pretty decent. Well, plug it into this. And off you go with the same exact setup. I could also imagine, you know, maybe doing some gaming on it. This is something that I'm definitely going to test as well. And then, of course, I also kind of had in my mind as well a full computer setup via the Steam Deck. So let's really quickly plug it into the Steam Deck and let's just see what's going to happen here. So it has immediately just grabbed it and is used. And look at that. The touch screen is even working. Oh, my. Now this this is interesting hmm okay but then you also have the ability to take this one step further and switch to desktop mode still tweaking some settings here to just make everything look correct the scaling was off and it still appears to be like somewhat off in some different areas but i think maybe if i went out and came back in i think uh i think that might kind of complete uh, the uh, writing of the ship here. But yeah, you're basically just running a Linux laptop now that's being powered by your Steam Deck. Everything is, is running pretty well from this perspective. 
Did you think I was going to get to the whole video and not plug in Surface Duo 2? Come on, of course I am. And of course, since Surface Duo does not have any sort of desktop mode, what you get instead is just a blown up version of the Duo screen. But, you know, it is a touch screen, so you can scroll around and do whatever you want to do. And then a cool thing about this is that you can sort of launch the screen or launch the app you want to launch. And then let's say it's something like YouTube that, you know, a big complaint about Duo is that whenever you span uh, a video across both screens, you have a hinge down the middle. Well, now I can bring it right into the middle span it and go full screen that's a pretty decent experience now a problem that you are going to have though is that if you close your your uh, surface duo you're done so this thing is going to have to remain open and if you open it up into phone mode i think yeah you're going to get you're going to get this you're going to get um a, a single screen so that is one disadvantage duo would have to sit here uh, while you are doing this so you know maybe you want a bigger screen i mean it is quite a bit larger and the the video viewing experience would definitely be better here as well. And perhaps, perhaps there is also more that I can demonstrate using this setup in a future video. So there's definitely a lot of flexibility. You can use that HDMI port on the side and just use it as a monitor itself and kind of bypass the controls and things like that. So definitely gonna have another video coming. Uh, let me know in the comments some stuff you'd wanna see tested, be it stuff uh, from an Android phone or perhaps from the Steam Deck. And I will try my best to uh, kind of do some of that stuff for you. Of course, I have a link in the description down below should you want to purchase this product yourself. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe on your way out. Guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.